Okay, friends and neighbors, it's DK with Mr. V Amps. We have another Fender Deluxe Reverb here. Um, this one's, it works, but apparently the sound is fading and it's not tremendously reliable at the moment. Um, so, actually Buddy put a 12AY7 in the first position there instead of the 12AX. That sounds like something I would do. I think I made a video about doing that a while ago. I think he did that one on his own. Missing a knob. No big deal there. But uh, this is in general working order. It's uh, early 2000s and still got a lot of original stuff in there. I think the only thing I see that isn't probably original is maybe that resistor because it's standing up off the board. We still have the old schools five waters there. Those usually get kind of crispy and want to come off. I don't see that they're getting crispy and coming off. But it'd be nice to float those above the board a little bit. This one's probably just going to need some general maintenance. I think this is the Texas Red Edition or something. What's funny is, it happens to all of them. The plates just rub off and you can't read the text anymore. You can probably see me there. Hello. Yeah, this I'm pretty sure this was the Texas Red Edition, but like the last one that I had that I didn't show you, same difference. Um, also, we've got a Fender Concert Reverb. This is, a, I think, the 93 edition, 90, 1993 one. And I guess it's really messed up. Um, I know what's wrong with that one. I don't know what's wrong with this one really entirely. So let's plug this one in and see if it explodes. To help me on this quest, I now have an electrical solder sucking gun. Weehaw! I'm sure that the real electronic professionals will scoff at my generic one, but that's the way it be. Okay, to get the boards out of one of these joyous things, first you gotta take off the knobs, then you gotta take off the nuts on the jacks and the knobs and all that. Then you get to take those screws out. And you got to make sure the wires are out of the way, and then you can sit the board up and work on it. <clears throat> so we're going to kind of go crazy on all of these older Illinois capacitors, because it's such a pain in the keister to do it. If it was just one cap that was bad, it's a lot of work. You're talking 30, 40 minutes just taking it apart and putting it back together just to do five minutes of soldering. So we want to, you know, be very thorough, so hopefully we don't have to go back into this amplifier for years. Okay, so I guess that's zoomed in well enough. So I got the board to sit up. Now I can work on it. I'm waiting for this to preheat. It beeps like an oven. <laughs> I mean, exactly like an oven. It's kind of funny. So I'm going to start. We have a crusty, sort of crusty cooked 1K resistor. And then we're just going to start going down the row with electrolytic capacitors. I have new electrolytic capacitors and our big fancy capacitors. We are using the F and T's. I know that'll give you amp freaks a big exciting a big exciting rush of energy. And I know everybody loves F and T and they love their Sprague atoms and their Sozos and all of that. Okay, so there we're ready to desolder. Thank you, thank you. We're good, thank you. Okay, so I know the reason we're using the F and T's here is primarily because they're the correct values for the circuit. They're the modern values like this amp would want. I'm sure somebody's gonna want a review of this uh, desoldering tool or what I think about it. At this point, my only opinion is it sure beats doing it manually. Alright, I think I got it. Nah. They bent the legs over pretty far. And it's that stupid silver solder. I gotta get in close and use both hands. Okay, and like magic, there's still more to do here, but like magic, the capacitors are all changed. Those are all changed, all the electrolytics, all of those electrolytics, that electrolytic, that other electrolytic next to it, 
those electrolytics, those electrolytics. Now why world would I go and do all of this if I didn't test each individual capacitor? This amplifier is such a pain in the keister to take apart that the amount of time it takes you to take it apart is... <laughs> It, it, you just you just do this kind of stuff. These are the components that expire. Um, these resistors that like to get loose and wonky were not loose and wonky, but the um, solder joints I reflowed them and you know de-stressed them a bit. Uh, there's a capacitor hiding down there that got changed. I reflowed all of the solder on all of the tube sockets. The 12AX7 over there was particularly in need of that. Um, I've cleaned the pots and now I suppose we turn it on and see if it explodes. I checked the polarity of my capacitors like eight times so I don't expect any fireworks but yeah. Okay so we're running at about 80 volts on the variac. All the functions start working when you get about 60 volts in it that's enough for the solid state supply to work. So she makes sound and it's plenty loud so yeah, I don't anticipate that anything has gone wrong at this point. Everything seems to be okay. So we'll bring the we'll bring the voltage up the rest of the way. Um, poke at it with a stick a bit. I think I see a cobweb. I should get that with a chopstick. There's a cobweb on that capacitor. How'd that get in there? I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it. And I know I'm just going to want to grab it with my fingers, but that's not smart because this is a tube amp. Duh. Okay, so tapping around in it with a stick didn't cause anything interesting to happen. That's fine. Tapping the tubes didn't produce any significant audio through the output. Valve 1, this is a really, really sensitive tube. And uh, again, not a ton of noise there. Of the two power tubes, they don't go boing and bonk. The one of them has a little bit of a mechanical rattle inside of it but it's not translating to the audio on the outside of the amp so and it ain't broke we don't need to fix it so I should put this up to full voltage verify that the bias is safe um, owner says he likes the way it sounds now so that's fine we're not gonna mess with that um, but uh, as long as the bias is in a safe range okay the Kobe probe 9 million bias detector is hooked up about 445-ish volts and 33, 32, 33 milliamps were well in the safe range. Um, I believe 40, our maximum is like, what was it, 42.7. So yeah, we're well in the safe zone. This bias is a little on the cool side, but like I say, Buddy says he likes the way the amp sounds, so ain't broke don't fix okay so it's kind of late in the evening so no rocking out but we got the furnace in the background to keep us company and accompany our lovely music so clean channel reverb it I don't know 30 percent 35 percent something like that <laughs> drive channel with probably too much treble on it for a drive channel.
this evening. Um, again, not really trying to dial in a perfect tone per se. Um, the issue with the amp wasn't the tone or that it had been altered or messed up. It was that it was experiencing reliability issues and these PC boards get brittle and traces like to lift and solder joints like to crack and this was built in the early 2000s so capacitors like to go pop and leak and you know just stuff so this got a full-blown maintenance and I think it should be okay for a good while and we'll do some more testing on it before we give it back to our customer and now just because you didn't drink all of your milk we bring you beware of the variac okay so this is a variac I use this I even used it today it even has a voltmeter on the front how nice that's a lovely meter but guess what this has a problem you can't trust it entirely let me explain to you why we have numbers around on the outside that represent voltage so let's take it up to where the pointer says 65 volts okay let's just say on that meter uh, looks about like I don't know. It's over 50. Maybe about right. What does our voltmeter say about this? 70.8 volts. Well, that's not too bad. That's only 5 volts off. Let's go up to 100 and oh, let's see. That's 104, 5. That should be about 110, so that'll be for our vintage old amplifier, right? That'll work perfect for our old vintage amplifier. Wait a minute, 130 volts, 129 volts. So if I put this up to 117, what I think is normal house power, I'm getting 135 volts. Oh boy. So, again, I haven't blown anything up with this, but don't listen to this dial meter. Don't listen to this thing. Don't listen to that meter. Uh -uh. Don't do that. Put your voltmeter that you trust more than you trust that meter. Put that on the uh, input voltage so you don't blow up an amplifier. Customers don't like when things get blowed up. Okay? Okay.